And this is part two in our series of passing the CCI Routing and Switching written exam, learning to learn. So if you haven't yet seen part one, which is gonna be linked here, uh, click that and I encourage you to watch that first. But if you've already seen it, then you're at the point to where you've made your decision on the strategy and you've started to plan about going, about getting this written taken care of, getting it knocked out. So, why learning to learn? Why is that the second step? Well, the reason I bring up learning to learn is because once you, you know, there's basically something that I believe that you should address before you start digging into the actual exam, right? So yes, we've got our strategy ready, we've got our learning plan, but really I think it merits taking time to spend a little time first on really focusing on how you learn because this is a very difficult exam. You don't ever want to underestimate the difficulty of the CCIE uh, routing and switching written exam. And especially if you've taken it before, then you know. Um, this exam will dare you uh, to not take it seriously. <laughs> it dares you. Yeah, fine. Don't take me seriously. Watch what happens, right? Um, you have to check your pride at the door. So that's really the attitude, a uh, good attitude to have from the beginning. Um, it's not merely just a CCMP plus. Um, these are some of the ideas or, or kind of even thoughts that have come to my mind that you need to get rid of, right? It's not a CCMP P plus. It's not just an exam to get out of the way so that you can get to doing the lab exam, right? Um, it's also not just like an IQ filter. So, you know, it, well, I mean, I don't know if I could speak to this, <laughs> Uh, it's not necessarily someone who has a really high IQ could just do a quick study and figure it out and take it. It's not just an intelligence test. Although I do have some uh, criticisms of that that I'm going to express in a later video, but it's not just that, right? Uh, so you don't want to disrespect the written exam. I know I did to an extent uh, because it will, it will eat you up and absolutely spit you out and mock you <laughs> and all your generations if you do. Right. So, again, how do I pass this exam? You know, you have to learn all the things. There are no shortcuts, no substitutes. Most videos about this topic are going to say the same thing. They're going to start out saying the same thing, right? There's no silver bullet to one particular product or thing to do that that is going to get you to pass because of the sheer difficulty. Right? You need to be able to retain very large amounts of information, uh, be able to recall large amounts of information. It has a tremendous uh, breadth and width and depth. Um, so the tactics that may have gotten you the CCMP or got you through the CCMP, those same tactics are not necessarily going to be enough to pass this exam. Right? It, for me, it was the most challenging exam yet in my career. Uh, of course, I have the lab coming up, but uh, so far, that is the most difficult exam so far. So before diving in, again, that's what I want to emphasize. It's good to take a little bit of time, not a whole lot of time, not that you're going to go take a college course about it, but um, take some time to sort of evaluate, regroup. You know, maybe you just passed your CCMP written or, or CCMP and you've got that certification. Or maybe you've let a couple years go by, you've got your CCI already, you need to do a retake. Just take a little bit of time to evaluate your learning process. Think about what has helped you or not helped you in past exams in terms of learning. Think about those times where you were, you know, in focus and you're really absorbing a lot of new material and it was feeling really good. We've all felt those, you know, sort of aha moments where we're getting concepts, and it, it's a great feeling. How did we get there? What were we doing? What was the environment? What was the techniques we were using to learn? So that's what it, it's really important to focus on that, and it merits some time up front, like, like I said. So when I mentioned this on Twitter that I passed and I was going to do this video series, I had a call out by Tim McConaughey, who uh, his Twitter is here up on the screen. And this link is here to a course that he recommended, and he said that, you know, he couldn't emphasize it enough. And I really respect him, and I've met him in person, and I've read his blogs. Uh, there will be links below, like I said. 
you know, and I really appreciate his story of his journey of getting his CCIE. And one thing you mentioned is learning how to learn. And I actually, on that advice, started taking this course as well. And I have it up here. I am enrolled. Um, so I've started to take it. And I have to say, it's a really good course. It is allow me to sort of reevaluate in light of the struggles I had with the written to kind of reevaluate how I'm learning. And it breaks down learning into two sort of uh, phases or modes. It has a name for for them. I have sort of a name to uh, conceptual and trivial. Uh, some people may not like it being called that, but that's how I sort of visualize these two different learning modes. And we'll talk about that here in just a moment. Um, what is there to learn? Well, at the expert level, one thing that you'll find, and we'll get into this more when we talk about materials, but there is no one source of information that you're going to be able to use. So part of that is learning to learn is learning to know that in order to grasp the concepts or to understand or comprehend, you know, if you don't get it with, you know, this vendor A material that you purchased or these videos or this book, um, you need to develop this attitude of tenacity, you know, that whatever it takes, uh, I'm going to need to dig and find until I understand this topic. You have to own the blueprint because ultimately you're going to be responsible for knowing it at exam time, not that vendor, right? Uh, the other thing you have to do is your mind will sort of play tricks on you. And this is where I want to really em emphasize the blueprint because I I'll talk about this and mistakes that I made. Um, I tended to rely on certain courses too much and not come back in and fill in areas of the blueprint that I was weak on. Let me switch to the written topics. <laughs> um, there's a link below to the spreadsheet that has the combined blueprints. Um, but really, you're going to find that no matter whose material you follow, it's not going to cover to the extent, you know, it's likely not going to cover deep enough or wide enough all the material that is in this blueprint. This blueprint, is it, it's exactly what it is, its namesake. This is what you use to determine readiness and as a checklist of what I need to learn, right? And there is a lot, folks. Man, there's a lot of stuff on here. Um, I, one thing I liked about Tim's blog of his experience is how he said that he would uh, just about put it on par with the difficulty of the lab because it's, it's a different animal for sure. There's a lot of material to cover. So really, again, you own this. You own the blueprint. You know, um, if you use uh, testing software like Boson, you know, to sort of test your knowledge because you don't get questions on this or that topic, or if you don't see one or the other topic in another, you know, in a book, uh, does that mean that you can skip those? No, obviously not. And that's one thing I found that in my brain that I was doing, and especially after the first fail, I had to come back here and do a more honest assessment of my own knowledge looking through all the blueprint topic topics honestly and because your brain you know we all know our brains right our brains are trying to be efficient and somewhat uh, self-serving and we'll see a topic like oh i got that covered right we'll skip it oh i got that covered skip it our brain is going to when we look at the daunting amount of material that has to be covered your brain is going to want to try to eliminate some of these topics um initially, I would think, and make you think that you can skip over that somewhat. Don't be fooled. <laughs> you need to know every topic on there and know it well, right? So that is what you need to learn. And realizing that it is so much, this is where we get into sort of the different phases of learning. Um, granted, some of the things that you see in the blueprint, you are going to be more familiar with. Some of them may be completely new. You've never done anything with that. Um, there is this concept of diffuse mode learning, and that's basically conceptual. So, again, I break it up into the concepts and then um, the details, right? So, phase one is are those concepts, is that diffuse mode thinking. And that's where you want to make sure that everything in the blueprint 
that you understand that technology. Okay, granted, you don't know on the CLI how to, you know, configure it. Uh, again, some of the topics you'll notice, you know, also watch the verbs here. Uh, these, these verbs are based on uh, learning principles. So some of these say evaluate, use, apply, diagnose, verify, right? Uh, those verbs mean specific things. You can actually look them up in uh, educational material. Uh, there's a name for this set of um, testing verbs. I don't remember the name of those. Uh, perhaps you can comment below if, if you think of those. But, you know, there are different levels, uh, but at a minimum, a lot of them are going to be either describe or explain. So what that means is, granted, we're not going into the depths of the commands, but you need to understand that technology. And I always try to, in these areas, sort of be the salesperson. So I think about, you know, why is this technology needed? Why would I recommend this to be implemented somewhere or not be implemented? Um, how is it different? You know, how is this with BGP, for example? There's so many ways to apply policy. Why would I use in a particular scenario this policy, you know, or this command? What is it doing? What is that feature? What are the mechanics? And you can't rush that part of it. You cannot rush understanding. Um, there were some areas where I tried to, or my brain allowed me to sort of skip over those and get into the details. And really, that's not the point, right? When you're doing that, you're getting to the point to where you're sort of, sh you know, short-circuiting really the purpose of the expert certification, as that is to become an expert. So it means you need to understand these topics. And sometimes you're going to get stuck. Like I said, you may get to a cert certain topic and really focus on your learning because you may get to that topic and you may get stuck. Like, I don't. I just don't get it, you know. Uh, that happened to me a number of times. And what I tried to do was just switch things up a little bit. So wh when it comes to this particular phase, that is a concepts phase, you really need to do whatever it takes to get that aha moment. You know, be persistent. Be, uh, develop a tenacious attitude. So if you're watching a video and, you know, you purchased INE for just as an example, right? Not picking on anyone. Say you purchase an INE video series, you watch the INE videos, and for this particular topic, it just hasn't entered your brain. We're all different. Maybe that was the perfect thing for student A, but for you, it's still not there. Um, don't stop there. Don't move on. You know, uh, you want to learn. Uh, there's a lot of places to go, right? So... Uh, it's, I'm going to talk about materials later, but if you have other materials you can go to, uh, go to YouTube, um, go to Cisco Live On Demand videos. Uh, if one book you read the chapter and it didn't make sense, try to find another book from another you know author until you get that moment where you feel like, okay, I'm not stuck anymore. I get the concept. I can honestly look at that blueprint topic and say... I understand what that is, right? I can explain, I can describe, I can identify. And prepare for some disappointment. Um, like I said, this is, expert level is much different. This is a whole different ballgame than CCMP. Or maybe in CCMP you can follow just vendor A or vendor B. Um, prepare to be disappointed and prepare to get stuck on certain topics. You know, some of these topics are, are hard. Uh, and... You may need to review over and over again until you get it. So you got to develop that tenacity. Scour is needed. And for some topics, I got down to the RFC level. And there's some very well-written RFCs, by the way. Uh, some of them are great texts for students. <laughs> there's a lot of variety there, but sometimes even the RFCs can help out. Sometimes you need to lab. Now, you don't want to get too caught up into labbing a lot of details. That's that comes later, right? But again, uh, under this phase, you want to get that aha moment, get the concepts. Then you move on to phase two, which I call Trivial Pursuit. Um, the course, the Coursera course, calls this focus mode. And this is where you've already gotten the concepts, but you're digging a little deeper 
and you're trying to get more depth in the topic. Some of the more granular details about a, a particular protocol or technology. And you're going to spend a lot of time here. I know I did. Uh, I call it Trivial Pursuit because if you've ever tra played Trivial Pursuit, um, naturally you're good at certain categories answering questions that are familiar to you. What about, I remember playing True Pursuit, there was, I think, a drama category, right? There are going to be categories that you have very little, if any, depth on, right? So those, you need to get uh, very familiar with them. You need to find your gaps from the concepts. And that's where some of the testing materials come along and can help you out, um, like Boson Software, which we'll talk about a little bit. Uh, it will help you sort of pinpoint your weaknesses um, and and you need to of course continually evaluate that so add details now that you have the concepts try to get into the details uh, reinforce your knowledge retain it and and you want to review review and review and that's where we get into learning tools in particular for for this phase two the focus mode again it's different for everyone but you know there there's a thousand different ways and theories about how to take notes right? You're going to read, you talk to 10 different people, they have 10 different ways of taking notes. Again, we're learning to learn. That's very important. Do what you know works for you or, or that you find helpful. So for the con concept phase, phase one, conceptualization, uh, it's good. I found anyway, I'll share what helped me. Uh, I found it very helpful to do mind mapping, and there, there are open source programs out there. There, you know, I'll talk about specific tools in a little bit, but um, mind mapping is very helpful. I'll show, I'll just show you an example of one that I did um, for. I thought I still had it open. Yeah. So when I'm trying to visualize and piece together the different parts, uh, a drawing may help too. You know, drawing out a topology or drawing out a uh, process diagram. I did some of those as well, preparing for the written. Um, this, these are out on my uh, GitHub repo, by the way. So when I was studying DMVPN, I was trying to dig a little deeper into that. You know, I made this uh, mind map that really helped me in my mind. It forced me to logically sort out, you know, a lot of different options there. So uh, that's a great tool. Uh, like I said, drawings, uh, draw.io, Visio, whatever your poison. And then when we get into the details, the focus mode, or as I, I would say, the true pursuit, uh, this gets into a lot of memorization, to be honest. So there are a lot of tools to do that. And the both, both bloggers that I cite below, both Tim and another blogger who uh, talked about his CCI journey, uh, his written pass, um, Jed Casey, Jedediah Casey, they both really highly emphasize flashcards. And I have now taken that to heart because flashcards really help you with the memorization component. You know, the problem with studying such, so, such a broad category or broad set of topics is that and especially when you get older like me, when you go from one protocol to another, you know, when you go from IoT and then you have to go back and look at, you know, layer two VPNs, um, over time that, <laughs> that heat cools down, right? And it's harder and harder to withdraw that information. Flashcards help with that because, uh, you know, and that's another reason too that you don't want to extend out your pursuit of the written exam over too long a period of time because again you want to keep you want to have a lot of information fresh in your mind when you walk into that exam flashcards help with that there's something else that i created that helps me with memorization uh, something i call a drill sheet i use this for like long lists so the the flashcards we all know how those work right you know you you basically take notes and you put something in there in a form of a question or true false or multiple choice or fill in the blank and those are small bits of information which is good but sometimes you want to remember like all of the you know uh cos values and their corresponding dscp values and uh what those hexadecimal values are for those dscp 
codes, right? Um, for something like that, maybe it's helpful to like list those out in a sheet or you know in a table, and that's really what I use the uh, memory drills for. So this is something that I have that is uh, I don't have it constructed that way at the moment, but you know like OpenStack components. So uh, you can break this up in individual flashcards or in a multiple flashcards. Or what you can do is you can you can make these tables and create like an answer sheet here. And then what I would do is then create a uh, review sheet. And I would blank out all these areas, right? And when you do that, you blank it out, you keep this blank, and then you come back from time to time and you try to fill out these columns. So these are, for example, all your multicast link local reserved addresses uh, and IPv6. So you come back in here to a blank sheet and you try to fill in as much as you can, as fast as you can. And the benefits to this, for me anyway, for memorization, where it helped me is I am actually writing out. So with flashcards, you're selecting you know, options. Um, here you're having to write out the information. Um, so like MAC addresses, you know, that you that you want to memorize. Uh, this was really hard. <laughs> I got to where I could just about fill this out, you know, on my own. So things like that will help you like right before an exam, you know, when you're doing your review. So those are the learning tool, you know, the, some of the learning methods that I would encourage you to use and think about and get equipped for um, as you prepare for some very intensive learning that is preparations for the CCI written exam. Um, next, let's see, our next um, series will be coming hopefully tomorrow. And I think that's where we get into talking about um, Actually, let me look one moment. Sorry about that. Yeah, I think we're going to talk about materials. Maybe that's the next one. So uh, anyway, these are the links I mentioned. Hopefully this has been helpful to you. Uh, these are two bloggers who were very encouraging to me when I was getting ready, prepared for the written. Um, they have, they're, they're very real about how it was for them. And of course, this is the Coursera U URL I mentioned, and the blueprints combined with a sort of checklist that you can use for yourself to fill out is the link here. So hope you enjoyed it. Hope this helps. We shall see you back here for part three.